part two of session 19 and with that we finish it we're going to talk about polarization and third density as we come out of second density let's start The one thing to remember from the past video is that we were talking about the transition between second and third density of entities that were graduating. So we're gonna continue with that and we're gonna get a little bit more into the polarization that happens naturally once we get into third density. So we're talking about the low levels of third density and how the environment, the universe, whatever you wanna call it, the creator itself acts upon third density to create this polarization. It's a little technical, not much uh, philosophy around this, but I have a couple of things that obviously I always want to throw in just to philosophize about it. So without further ado, we're gonna continue with the uh, question 13 of session 19. And this is Don asking, I will make a statement with respect to my understanding then and ask if I am correct. There is a, what I would call, a physical catalyst operating at all times upon the entities in third density. I assume this operated approximately the same way in second density. It's a catalyst that acts through what we call pain and emotion. Is the primary reason for the weakening of the physical body and the elimination of body hair, etc., so that this catalyst would act more strongly upon the mind and therefore create the evolutionary process? Ra explains, this is not entirely correct, although closely associated with the distortions of our understanding. Consider, if you will, the th tree, for instance. It is self-sufficient. Consider, if you will, the third density entity. It is self-sufficient only through difficulty and deprivation. It is difficult to learn alone, for there is a built-in handicap, at once the great virtue and the great handicap of third density. That is the rational, intuitive mind. So I need to recap from the last video. If you haven't watched it, go watch it because they talk about this stuff as well. And it's the uh, integration of the rational and intuitive thinking into the third density body so it can create these uh, abstract thoughts. We discussed it in the past video, so I'm not going to recapitulate all that stuff. But for what's relevant, <coughs> it's that... Uh, this is what's granted for for the third density being and it's a handicap, but also like they say it's um, a great virtue as well So this is going to create the possibility on the third density body the human to have this need to deal with other selves and we're gonna get into that too uh, but the question that Don is asking is that in second density as we know there is the same catalyst that creates this seeking for uh, for graduation in the third by experiences that um, just have this emotional and painful kind of catalyst to be processed. So the same thing Don is asking, that must exist here and that might be the reason why we became weaker, you know, the physical body weaker. And so Ra is saying that um, this is not entirely correct, although closely associated with the distortions of our understanding, which is, you know, that there is um, uh, a difference between the self-sufficiency of trees, animals, and so on in nature, and us as third density beings, humans, in nature, we kind of rely on, on each other a lot more. And because of that, we also need to have a rational intuitive thinking, which again, we're going to touch a little bit more uh, in a little bit. So the rest of the answer, Ra says, thus the weakening of the physical body, as you call it, was designed to distort entities towards a predisposition to deal with each other. Thus, the lessons which approach a knowing of love can be begun. Okay, so really quick, like I said, this is just that part where the weakening of the body, in a sense, is also to promote this dealing with each other uh, because we have no other... This is like the classic example of, you know, if we're all in an island together, you know, we need to survive, what are we going to do? We're going to go and print money, we're going to do... No, we're going to go and co cooperate with each other and we'll see the real nature of humans, you know, cooperative uh, species. So uh, that also, you know, there's there's two ways. Actually, there's only one way, which is through love, to try to uh, cooperate with each other or uh, survive 
among each other. Obviously, that one way of love can be divided into the two polarities, positive and negative. We're going to get into that too, uh, which is either love of others, love for others and try to work together, or love for self and manipulate others for our own gain, which is the same thing in loved, loving terms, uh, but different uh, polar opposites, of course. So, all right, the rest of the answer, Ra says, this catalyst then is shared between peoples as an important part of each self's development as well as the experiences of the self in solitude and the synthesis of all experience through meditation. The quickest way to learn is to deal with other self. This is a much greater catalyst than dealing with the self. Dealing with the self without other selves is akin to living without what you call mirrors. Thus the self cannot see the fruits of its beingness. Thus, each may aid each by reflection. This is also a primary reason for the weakening of the physical vehicle, as you call the physical complex. Okay, let's go uh, little by little here. The catalyst is shared between people. This catalyst being the uh, dealing with each other and having the experiences with each other in terms of our intuitive and rational thinking. That provides a lot of catalyst, probably an infinite amount of catalyst that we can deal with. Definitely an infinite amount of catalyst. And through that, through those experiences and of the self in solitude and the synthesis of all experience through meditation, this is the process by which we integrate the experiences based on whatever uh, type of catalyst it provided to, to, the, to the entity itself. So that is the primary uh, or the primordial way to, uh, to process experiences here in third density and then integrate them to create this polarization, whichever it may be. Uh, the quickest way to learn is to deal with other selves. So if you like being a hermit uh, and just not socializing with anybody, you are missing a lot of catalysts. Uh, this is something that is very uh, uh, misunderstood, if you will. Because when we think of spirituality, we think like we're going to retire, you know, to the mountains and so on. I mean, that's just a little childish example, but you know, it, it's not like that. Like, you want to be out there. You want to expose yourself to other people so you can deal with your own reflection. Because other people, and now we're getting to, you know, Hindu philosophy and Zen Buddhism and all this stuff, which is just the dealing with other selves so they can reflect who you are um, in them. And that's just how we deal with each other. That's why um, us as a society, because we're so distorted, we uh, kind of have this this... Uh, aversion to deal with other people because we don't like some people and the, what we don't like from other people is really what we don't like about us and we get into the philosophy of this which is not needed but this is just one of the things that we can extrapolate from what Ra is saying that we start dealing in third density then dealing with the self with the other selves akin to living without mirrors of course because they are mirrors just like I said uh, the Essenes were very um, very well known for having the seven Essene mirrors of relationships and that's what they're talking about exactly the same thing thus the self cannot see the fruits of its beingness which obviously it's then who we are who we are at uh, spiritual nature and of course what we came here uh, here to deal uh, especially in these times where our spirit has already grown so much and we have been incarnating over and over and over again and we've done this work in the past too, depending on where you come from. I'm not sure where you come from. I'm not sure where I come from, but it seems like we have been accumulating all this information over time. So it's really important to see the catalyst that is available to us because it's not only by chance, but mostly is about guided and programmed catalyst over time by our higher selves and help by our guides and ancestors and so on. So that's it. This is also a primary reason for the weakening of the physical body, as we may call the physical complex, of course, because if we can deal most of our time uh, with the, uh, the mind dealing with the experience and the catalyst, then that's the primary reason why we are weaker. So we have more time doing this stuff. Next question. Don says, then we have second density beings who have primarily motivations towards service to self and possibly a little bit of service to others with respect to their immediate families. Going into third density and carrying this bias with them, but being in a position now where this bias will slowly be modified to one which is aimed toward a social complex. 
and then ultimately toward union with the all. Am I correct? Ra says, you are correct. And just to clarify this one question that Don has and that uh, Ra says that he is correct is that in second density, there is the tendency obviously to preserve the self or preserve the, uh, the group, the, the pack and so on. So in that self preservation, there is what we can call uh, service to self, but it's not quite so. And Rod's gonna explain that in uh, the next question. Uh, but that's what's, uh, what's being asked right here. If that then carries over to, uh, to third density, which it does, and we'll see that again in a further question, uh, but also it gets in third density kind of uh, just steer towards another direction, which is around the families and so on. Uh, but yeah, basically that that is correct what uh, what Don asked. So without analyzing too much, we're gonna get into the next question, which is pretty long. So Don elaborates and says, then the newest third density beings who have just made the transition from second are still strongly biased towards self service. There must be many other mechanisms to create an awareness of the possibility of service to others. I am wondering first two things. I'm wondering about the mechanism and I'm wondering when the split takes place, where the entity is able to continue on the road towards service to self that will eventually take him to fourth or fifth density. He continues on saying, I would assume that an entity can continue, can start say in second density with service totally to self and continue right on through and just stay on what we call the path of service to self and never ever be pulled over. Is this correct? Ra says, this is incorrect. The second density concept of serving self includes the serving of those associated with tribe or pack. This is not seen in second density as separation of self and other self. All is seen as self since in some form of second density entities, if the tribe or pack becomes weakened, so does the entity within the tribe or pack. So here, clarification from Ra, uh, Don is asking if this kind of polarization of service to self starts in second density and then transitions into third density, and there's the possibility of just going um, without being pulled to towards uh, service to others. And this is incorrect in the way that Ra is explaining it, that the what we may think as service to self in second density is just the uh, preservation of the pack or the the family mentality that that they have which is seen as self because if the pack weakens so do they and it's almost like saying your own body you don't have a preference i would think for you know your liver over your kidneys or maybe uh, one shoulder over the other, I don't know, maybe you have, I don't know. <laughs> but in the sense of preferring something within one organism, you don't, you wanna keep them both. And weakening of one is weakening of the entire body. So the same thing is seen in second density. Remember the second, second density beings do not see themselves separated from the environment. They are part of the whole. So it's that uh, Gaian mentality, that Gaian uh, consciousness that keeps them going, but it does accelerate them in the process of separating themselves so they can become third density. So again, it, it is incorrect that this bias or uh, tendency to go to service to self in second density transfer to uh, third density, it's just a different thing. Ra continues and says, the new or initial third density entity has this innocent, shall we say, bias or distortion towards viewing those in the family, the society as you would call, perhaps country, as self. Thus, though a distortion not helpful for progress in third density, it is without polarity. The break becomes apparent when the entity perceives other selves as other selves and consciously determines to manipulate other selves for the benefit of self. This is the beginning of the road of which you speak. So further clarification from Ra, they say, first of all, that the new entity, the new third density entity, so say your dog just graduated to third density and it became a human. It would have this tendency to see the family, the immediate surroundings as, uh, as the self. And that's just the innocent, like they say, uh, bias towards uh, family and so on. 
society, it could be the whole country, um, depending on you know how they see it. And this distortion is not helpful for progress in third density because it is without polarity. There is no such thing as polarity in this view of the world. It becomes polarized once they realize that other people are other selves and they can manipulate. In this case, they're talking about the negative path and that's why Ross says at the end, which can be confusing a little bit if you don't uh, follow it through, at least it confused me the first time I read it. And it says, this is the beginning of the road of which you speak. Don was speaking about the negative path. And that's why they say that the break becomes apparent when the entity perceives other selves as other selves and consciously determines to manipulate other selves for the benefit of the selves. So just becomes uh, aware that other people are um, just like them and they can manipulate them for their own gain. That's the beginning of the negative path. And so I think that's pretty clear. We can move on to the next question where Don says, then through free will, sometime within the third density experience, the path splits and the entity consciously chooses, or he probably doesn't consciously choose. Does the entity consciously choose this path of the initial splitting point? Ra says, we speak in generalities, which is dangerous for always inaccurate. However, we realize you look for the overview. So we will eliminate anomalies and speak of majorities. The majority of third density beings is far along the chosen path before realization of that path is conscious. This is very interesting to me actually, because I would think that a third density uh, being would be aware of the choosing of the path in some way, but it doesn't seem to be like that. So it looks like the majority of third density beings are far along their chosen path without consciously realizing what path they chose. Uh, and this really potentiates them. Now, this is not as bad as you think, because a further question that I'm not gonna get at myself, uh, but Ra is saying that it's this is just how it works. Uh, you may not realize it until you've been very much into it. But what's cool is that most people, especially you who are listening to this and watching me, of course, <laughs> is that uh, you are already you already know what your path is. That's probably the reason why you're here. I don't know if it's positive or negative. I never know, but you already know because you resonate with all the um, the background of all this information that is given here, and it makes sense to you. So you know that you have chosen this path, whatever it may be, in the past, and you are part of this whole thing as it goes through, and your experiences come through, your catalyst becomes available, and so on. So that is the, um, the explanation that Ra gives here. And we're gonna move to the next question where Don says, can you tell me what bias creates their moments, their momentum toward the chosen path of service to self? And Ra says, we can speak only in metaphor. <laughs> some love the light, some love the darkness. It is a matter of the unique and infinitely various creator choosing and playing among its experiences as a child upon a picnic. Some enjoy the picnic and find the sun beautiful, the food delicious, the games refreshing, and glow with the joy of creation. He continues and says, Some find the night delicious, their picnic being pain, difficulty, sufferings of others, and the examination of the perversities of nature. These enjoy a different picnic. All these experiences are available. It is free will of each entity which chooses the form of play, the form of pleasure. This is a beautiful metaphor from Ra saying that um, that's just how the experiences are available out there. And it's very individual who decides to choose the darkness over the lights or light over the darkness. So it's really an individual choice. I love the analogy or the metaphor that they use to explain this because it really is like a picnic. You know, there is, uh, there's so much out there that you can just enjoy by simply exposing yourself to it and resonating with whatever it is that it might be. In this case, being the positive or the negative, dark or light. So who knew that Ra could be very poetic? <laughs> I love it. Don asks the next question. I assume that an entity on either path can decide to choose paths at any time and possibly retrace steps. The path changing being more difficult, the farther along is gone. Is this correct? Ra says, this is incorrect. The further an entity has what you would call polarized, 
the more easily this entity may change polarity, for the more power and awareness the entity will have. Those truly helpless are those who have no, not consciously chosen, but who repeat patterns without knowledge of the repetition or the meaning of the pattern. That is me and you. <laughs> right at the end there. That's me and you. Those truly helpless are those who have not consciously chosen, but who repeat patterns without knowledge of repetition or the meaning of the pattern. This is what's happening to us all the time until we become aware that the nature of our reality is to show us the same experiences in different ways, just like we have dreams that are uh, analogous to our reality. The experiences are analogous to the catalyst that we need to uh, process and accept. So the same way, this is what's happening. Um, people who are helpless are those who are repeating the same patterns over and over again. I mean, all the classical example of, you know, the person who is in an abusive relationship, it could be a woman or a man, um, and they get into abusive relationships is more commonly happening to women because of the abusive nature of men in our society. But they keep repeating the same pattern. They keep finding the same person in different skins and different uh, names and so on. So uh, what Don was asking is if you get polarized, say, towards the positive and you want to change to the negative or vice versa, is it really hard the farther along you are? And Ross says not quite. You know, actually is the opposite. It's easier because you have a lot more knowledge. You have more awareness and you have more power in it. And that's why you can just flip around. Now this happened, just to give you a, a quick example, and I'm getting ahead, like, I don't know, 60 sessions <laughs> from now, but they talk about something that happened in Venus where Ra uh, is from and, or are from. And it's that two entities actually came polarized in the positive sense, but became negatively polarized in third density. They became very manipulative and they created this whole uh, problem in Venus, just these two entities. And they actually graduated to four density negative. And it wasn't until later that they realized that they had become negative where they were positive in the past. And because of that, they had to switch. So whatever they did, they just uh, simply switched. They didn't have to go back to third density and repeat everything. Uh, but that's just how easy they can switch. This is just the nature of our universe. So. Next question goes from Don saying, I believe we have a very, very important point here. It then seems that there is an extreme potential in this polarization, the same as there is in, to make an analogy, using electricity. We have a positive and negative pole. The more you build a charge on either of these, the greater the potential difference and the greater the ability to do work, as we call it, in the physical. This would seem to me to be the exact analogy that we have in consciousness here. Is this correct? Ra says, this is precisely correct. So first of all, I am not good with electricity. It's one of the fields where I simply lack a lot of visualizing and understanding, but I think this is simple to, uh, to, understand, to understand the analogy that Don is using and it's that uh, in electricity, you have the um, you have positive and negative, just what we have in spiritual consciousness. So the greater the potential or the greater the amount of polarization you have in one end, say uh, protons that are uh, are attracted to electrons and so on, or vice versa, then the greater the potential of work that can be done by that attraction, by that electromagnetic um, attraction that happens between the two of them. So two poles attract each other. The more one is polarized, the more work it can be performed. And I think this is precisely what Don is asking in terms of our spiritual consciousness. The more polarized towards the positive or negative we are, then the more work we can do within the consciousness realm of uh, using, or uh, yes, just using the consciousness of the universe. I would say that. I was gonna say manipulate, but that sounds more towards the negative. We as positive beings also manipulate the environment. It's not about manipulation in the, in the evil sense, but manipulation in just handling things. So uh, the more polarized you are, the better work you can do. And that just makes sense. It's just very intuitive. Great question by Don. Next question by Don is that 
he says, then it would seem that there is a relationship between what we perceive as a physical phenomenon, say the electrical phenomenon, and the phenomenon of consciousness in that they, having stemmed from the one creator, are practically identical but have different actions. Is this correct? Ross says, again, we oversimplify to answer your query. The physical complex alone is created of many, many energy or electromagnetic fields interacting due to intelligent energy. The mental configurations or distortions of each complex further adding fields of electromagnetic energy and distorting the physical complex patterns of energy. The spiritual aspect serving as a further complexity of fields which is of itself perfect but which can be realized in many distorted and, un in and unintegrated ways by the mind and body complexes of energy fields. Okay, so here's a mouthful. And the way I perceive this, which is Don is making a simple analogy of the electrical um, charge and the, uh, the consciousness or the beingness of us as humans. No surprise, we are a very complex, uh, yes, a complex. <laughs> We're a very complex machinery, if you will. I don't like that word, but just a, um, um, a compendium of vortexes and energies flowing of all kinds. It's a very intricate system that we have here, and it makes us appreciate a lot more even our body in this way, our body and our mind, and of course our spirit. So just to get into the answer that Ross says, the best way I can visualize this is that, like they're saying, the body alone has a uh, many, uh, let's say, uh, uh, vortices that creates these uh, this distortion fields, actually. We're gonna talk about torsion fields a little bit more. Um, these are the uh, whirlpools, let's put it that way, in our body that create all different kinds of, um, of manifestations. It could be, it's, it's the body itself, the mind itself also, creates distortions towards the um, the complexity of the body. And the patterns of energy are also distorted by our mind and our, our body itself. So it's a very intricate system of all these um, uh, little charges that are moving, you know, in, in their own way, but integrating as a whole in, in the, the complex that we are, the mind-body-spirit complex. What's interesting that they say is that the spirit itself, it's perfect. There is no distortion in the spirit, but there is distortion in the way we perceive it or uh, or that we we channel it through, let's call it that way. I, I visualize the spirit as being an, an energy that is just simply flowing. It's almost like water. Water is indistinguishable, it's water. And what changes is the curvatures of say the river or whatever channel is going through, plumbing, whatever it is. And those distortions are what makes the different types of currents and so on. So that's how I see the spirit going through the body and the mind, or the body being, say, the piping or the structure of the river, and the mind being maybe the weather that just distorts in the ways that you know the water is flowing through the structure and through the or uh, through the water too. Hope that makes sense. But it's just. Uh, a general way to see the body, the mind, and the spirit as a complex of uh, flowing of energy. And that energy, which is what Don is talking about here, is conform of even different, we talk about those three uh, complexes, which is the mind, the body, and the spirit, but within the complex, there are further distor distortions because of our thoughts and emotions. So um, we still have more to cover. This is a little complicated. I'm sorry if I don't explain this better. But um, and if anything, it's just a, a complexity of electromagnetic, um, say, like I say, vortices that just are present in the body, in the mind, being the one that configurates everything, and the spirit, which is perfect in itself, but channels through distortions. The rest of the answer is, thus, instead of one, shall we say, magnet with one polarity, you have in the body, mind, spirit complex, one basic polarity expressed in what you would call violet ray energy, the sum of the energy fields, but which is affected by thought of all kinds generated by the mind complex, by distortions of the body complex, and by the numerous relationships between the microcosm, which is the entity, and the macrocosm, which is, which in many form, in many forms, which you may represent by viewing the stars, as you call them, each with a contributing energy ray, which enters the electromagnetic web of the entity due to its in 
individual distortions. All right, let's piece this together <laughs> again. So um, instead of one, say, polarity, there is, um, uh, what do they say? Polarity, you have in the body, mind, spirit complex, one basic polarity expressed in what you would call the violet ray, which is the sum of all energies. The violet ray being our third eye, which is the um, uh, sixth chakra, in, in our case, sixth energy center. And it accumulates basically everything else that we are uh, in our other energy centers. That there is just the one, like they say, instead of one magnet with one polarity, you have in the mind, body, spirit, one basic polarity expressed in what you would call the violet ray energy. So that is the sum of everything that we are in terms of our levels of consciousness, concentrated in what they say and see actually as the violet ray, which is the only part that they really care for harvest. Very important. We're going to get into that in further sessions. But um, this is important because they see the sum of all the, uh, the polarization that we have there. So it's, uh, it's, it's almost like this is where all the water that we talked about that this complex uh, may create is concentrated and they can see it as the delta in this case where the water flows out, if that makes sense. So the other part is that there is also the relationship be between the microcosm that we are and the influence of the macrocosm. They're talking about the stars here. And the final question, we're gonna talk about what that means because Don is gonna ask about that. Uh, but this is basically what they're saying. All of that complexity that we talk about that we are in our mind, body, spirit complex is also affected by the, uh, the stars and the planets itself because that's what we're getting into and going to that question straight up. Don assess. Is this then the root of what we call astrology? Ra says, the root of astrology, as you speak it, is one way of perceiving the primal distortions, which may be predicted along probability possibility lines, given the, shall we say, cosmic orientations or end configurations at the time of the entrance into the physical mental complex of the spirit and at the time of the physical mental spiritual complex into the illusion. This then has the possibility of suggestion basic areas of distortion. There is no more than this. The part astrology plays is likened unto that of one root among many. So the part that astrology plays in all this stuff is like they say, it's almost like a root among many because it's just one influence that we have here. Obviously we know that astrology does not have a definite influence into who we are. But there is a science to it because those, uh, and this is the part where the torsion fields comes into play, stars and planets generate their own torsion fields. That's just how this universe is created and we don't need to get into the mechanics and the physics of it. Uh, but what's happening is that those torsion fields are actually affecting the uh, mind-body-spirit complex that we are at the moment of birth because that's just how we were designed. And that uh, influence creates certain uh, what they call uh, the basic areas of distortion. And that's basically it. That's the part of astrology. Uh, at the beginning, they say the root of astrology, as you speak it, is one way of perceiving the primal distortions, which may be predicted along probability possibility lines, giving the, shall we say, cosmic orientations and configurations at the time of entrance, which we know that's just basically the astral chart that we know we go back to uh, as close as possible to the time uh, and the date of our birth and we see how the planets and the stars might have um, helped into uh, configuring the body as, as we came through at birth. Um, I'm not good in astrology either, sorry about that, but I, I would assume that this has to do mostly with the moment of birth and not with the conception, but it leaves me to think that it might also be affected by the moment of conception too. Well, not conception, but there are I would call there's three stages of what happens when a third density being or a human uh, is created. Conception, then there is the integration of the soul or the spirit through the pineal gland at day 49, I believe it is. And then there is the moment of birth. So I'm not sure, like I said, I'm not good on astrology to know this. If you are, let me know in the comments because I would love to know how this is calculated, if it's just at the moment of birth 
or if it also has to do with the um, side of the conception or when the spirit arrives at day 49 after conception. But that's it. That's all we have for session 19. I'll see you in session 20. This has been a lot of fun. We're going to continue in session 20, talking about uh, some of the second density and third density evolution as Don continues to go through that line of questioning. And I enjoy this a lot because it has to do with our history, we, with who we are, things that we didn't learn in other, um, in other texts. Some of it is very obscure to me. Others are plain, simple and too conventional for me to understand. And this obviously resonates with me. I hope it resonates with you. It gives you a different angle for sure. And I enjoy it a lot. So again, thank you so much for watching. There is the links for all the content uh, on the Law of One if you're interested. Also the Facebook group if you want to join and have a conversation with me and others who are there about this Law of One the raw material and other ascension things that we can talk about and spirituality in general that I love discussing. So that's it. Like I said, I'll see you in session 20, part one.